We're talking about Bitcoin and silver's price movements and next key levels to watch for with Kevin Wadsworth. He is the co-founder of North Star and Bad Charts. Kevin, welcome back. Good to see you again, David. Kevin, I'm excited to have you on this week because uh, a lot has happened in the crypto markets over the last couple of weeks that we can uh, catch up on. But first, let's talk about technical analysis as a discipline. Now, I've been reading a lot of comments, not just on our channel, but other forums as well by people who, well, first of all, there are a lot of people who do follow technical analysis and your work, but there are a lot of doubters as well, people who may not understand the discipline and maybe we can shed some light on how it works. I've been reading comments like, uh, well, you know, he's just drawing squiggly lines or you might as well just read tea leaves or why don't you just throw some bones in the ground and read those. And uh, my personal favorite, zodiac signs, do you read those as well? So uh, uh, astrological patterns, that, that's basically what this looks like, technical analysis. So. Um, Help us out here. How does technical analysis work? And uh, maybe you can uh, use some examples of your previous work. Yeah, sure. As a meteorologist, I get this all the time with people sort of who don't really understand the science and think that's just some kind of uh, hocus pocus. But uh, I've been using the same sort of techniques that we use in weather forecasting, and it's uh, a lot of it's pattern recognition. But uh, with the markets, it's driven by investor behavior, sentiment, and the fundamentals. So when people say, uh, do you ever take any uh, consideration of the fundamentals? It's the fundamentals that create the price chart in the first place. This is the chart for Ripple that I did last year, and it was predicting price rises uh, all the way up to um, all-time highs within uh, 18 months or so. Of course, this chart has played out uh, to perfection, and we've seen the price rise and fall and rise and fall and confirm the existence of this arc on multiple occasions, and it's guiding us all the way up and is continuing uh, to do so now. You can see the Ethereum forecast, which uh, I gave last year as well, which uh, sort of played out. Um, exactly as forecast and this was using pretty sort of um, straightforward technical chart analysis and uh, looking at support resistance levels and what the technical indicators were telling us um, it's very clear on this chart for iota as well how these arc patterns play out time and time again it's um, very much a case of um, price falling forming a, a base a basing pattern which is very common any market traders will be aware of that and it uh, ties in with a, a lot of the other um, techniques that are sort of Stan Weinstein stage analysis and all that kind of thing. And then when you get the, uh, the, the advance, you can use these arc formations to give not only uh, targets for price, but targets for, for time as well. And of course, that I IOTA chart played out to perfection, uh, as did this forecast for Cosmos and this forecast for Litecoin, which at the time when Litecoin was down here and I was forecasting a rise of two, 300%, seemed a bit crazy. And a lot of people uh, saying it was, it was just you know, uh, hocus pocus, as you say. But when you get these technical breakouts, you get these arc patterns confirmed by the price touching them on multiple occasions. It gives you a really strong confidence and a good degree of confidence that as you move forwards, the price is going to move up. You say that a lot of the fundamentals are baked in to the price chart. Can we just pull up that example one more time? Um, yeah, that one, for example. How is it that uh, you're able to predict price movements to accuracy to uh, a certain degree of accuracy by just presumably i'm looking at this and if some somebody who may not understand technical analysis what would just say well you're just drawing a circle or a half circle in an arc and you're seeing where that i mean <laughs> any any anybody with uh, microsoft paint skills can do that but what, what you're <laughs> describing is what you're describing is your what you're saying is basically that half arc already already tells a story a fundamental story right so what, what is the story that this chart is telling us for example how the story, can we the story tell, that, yeah, yeah the, the story this is telling us is that the price is being supported by this resistance line time and time again here and here and here and here and here and here and then again here and here and here and then again here and again here and that's this this isn't um some kind of coincidence it's not a coincidence when price comes down to test a support line as it did here you see this this line here that comes from the very top all the way down price broke through it that's a technical breakout it then slid all the way down and where did it stop where did the um, panic lows stop it stopped on that line now why why is that is it a coincidence of course it's not coincidence it's because that's a, a support and resistance line that's why we call them support and resistance lines that's exactly what this arc is and Yes, I suppose anybody can draw these arcs on the technical price charts, but spotting them and realizing where they are when they've only just begun to form and before you get this right-hand side, that's key yeah. to the process. You have to spot these descending portions of the arc here on the left-hand side 
and then you have to yeah. wait for the first bounce, the first touch on the right hand side. Well, that, and that that's is what, the, that's key to it. That is the question, isn't it? Now, Kevin. Now, when you take a price chart and you just zoom into any any time interval that you you you've selected, what is the next step of your process? Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're always trying to project into the future. I mean, none of this is any use whatsoever unless it's going to give you an indication what's going to happen in the future. I mean, I can, I can go through dozens of these, whether it's Litecoin, whether it's... Let's take a real yeah. example. Let's talk about Bitcoin, and uh, we'll, 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 you know, we'll tie that into yeah. our current market yeah. uh, talk. So let's take a look, look at uh, Bitcoin's uh, price chart and, uh, and uh, walk us through, let's say, your methodology and uh, your next price level prediction. Yeah, of course. Cool. So this is the Bitcoin chart here. I think uh, I showed this last time I spoke to you, and it's a, yeah. a triple arc formation, which um, gives us a, a degree of confidence that price is going to continue to move upwards. That's, this is the, the big picture view, of course, that covers many years. And it, it projects into the future the likelihood of a bull market continuing into towards the end of this year, towards sort of September, October, and perhaps uh, into uh, into November, that kind of time period. Um, that's, th that forecast comes about from the fact that we've got a resistance line here and three arcs, and admittedly, there have only been three touches on this resistance line. So it's debatable that the upper resistance line goes there. It could go in some different position, but at the moment, the only evidence we have is to put it here. We do have evidence for these three arcs, of course, because price has already completed those arcs, and we're on the way to completing arc number three. So if we zoom in a little bit and look at arc number three in more detail, this is where we are in this large arc. You can see the, the arc beneath us. So we're using this arc to guide us up towards this resistance line. And as long as price remains above this arc, then the forecast remains valid. I would have to say, though, that I'd like to see price remaining above the 30-week uh, or um, approximately 150 to 200-day moving average because that, that's quite important in a bull market. So it's good to see the price also um, remaining above key moving averages. But you can see here, you know, we've, we've got several arcs at play. And this isn't hocus pocus. This is sort of investor sentiment and investor behavior as price rises and falls and rises and falls. It follows a cyclical pattern and it's nothing unusual or unexpected. It's just almost the forces of nature as shown in a price chart that's affected by human behavior and humans are part of nature, of course. So it's not surprising that, that our in investment um, patterns follow some kind of cycles. Spotting these cycles is really, really important. And I'm not going to sit here and say that every cycle works out absolutely perfectly, because of course it doesn't. But these large arcs that I've shown you just, just now, they have a success rate. Um, I and mean, people can go on my Twitter and follow my forecasts. They can go to go to our website and follow follow the forecasts on there. And they have a success rate of well over 90%. And I'd, I'd stick my neck out and say probably over 95%. So when, when these arcs cover time periods of years, um, they have a really, really good success rate. Okay. Can you zoom out just to look at the broader arcs, uh, the, uh, the the other chart that you have, the uh, the bigger arcs, yeah, sure. arcs one, two, three, and four. Now, let's tie this into investor psychology and sentiment. Now, you brought up the word sentiment. So whenever an, uh, uh, the price reaches the uh, further end of the arc, the, uh, the, the, the right-hand side of the arc, which is where we we're currently at, arc number three, how would you describe trade or sentiment at that particular moment? Is it fearful? Is it greedy? Is it neutral? Yeah, so, so I, I, if I'm right, the, the true greed stage is just about to unfold, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a key question here that's to do with Bitcoin dominance and how much of the crypto market is made up of Bitcoin and um, how that particular um, element of, of the cryptocurrency market um, unfolds in the next few uh, couple of weeks, I would say, is going to be critical here. But it, it feels to me as though the real greed stage, if you want to call it that, or excitement stage, euphoria is a term that's often used, is something that's sort of about to kick in, if I'm right. I mean, yeah. it, you could argue that this this move from sort of $12,000 to um, $65,000 was the euphoria stage. Mm -hmm. And of course, you look at some of the altcoins and they moved by many hundreds of percent but um looking at the charts at the moment across the whole sector it yeah. does look to me as though we're about to see um a particularly sort of exciting euphoric stage uh, right. unfold yeah my my first question upon looking at this chart is that you've got a line a, a straight line well not a straight line but a sloped line connecting all three past arcs on the left 
on the left side. Yeah, that that line going from the from the bottom left to the all, all the way to the uh, the top left. And I'm wondering yeah. why you've considered that the slope of the line will remain constant throughout arcs number three and four. Could the uh, could the slope of that connecting line not change as Bitcoin matures? Could it not flatten, perhaps even steepen? I'm just curious as to why you've chosen a steady slope line as a, as a yeah. connecting uh, point there. This, yeah. this, this dashed line I'm, I presume you're referring to, and the, the dashed line here was a, a support line. So as this um, bull market built out, you could have had it down here as a support line then price then accelerated upwards into the arc. It then mm -hmm. extended into the future. And these support lines, they they carry relevance on into the future, and mm -hmm. it became the support line in arc number two. The reason mm -hmm. I've, I've extended it onwards is because price broke down below it and tested it from underneath, so it's now a, re a resistance line. So the dashed line has, has um, changed from a support line to a resistance line, and we have just touched it um, pretty much um, in the recent move up to sort of 65,000 or so. Um, so there's a question mark in my mind as to whether this was a, a sort of bearish test from, from right. underneath. Um, so it, that remains to be answered. Another question somebody might have on looking at this chart is, how many arcs does Bitcoin have? I mean, we, <laughs> you've got three already. You, you've, got, you've got a fourth bullish arc. Uh, at, at what point does it turn you know, bearish for Bitcoin? Would you have an answer for that? Yeah, well, the, the chart technicals will, will tell us that, of course. Um, so the fundamentals will play out, and people have a lot of views on the crypto market around the fundamental future for all of the cryptocurrencies. I mean, there are thousands of them, literally thousands, I think over 5,000 now. So there are some very good cases for some of them and good arguments for them to become dominant and to, to survive into the future. But mm -hmm. for all I know, and I'm not going to say I'm a cryptocurrency expert, I'm a technical analyst, but for all I know, Bitcoin could be the the beta max of videotapes. You know, VHS became the, the go to videotape, and um, of course, beta max, which was uh, probably technically superior, um, failed for all sorts of various reasons. So, for all I know, yes, Bitcoin. I think, I think could a lot go of people and, might be too young to understand that reference, but I think, <laughs> but I, but I get it. Yeah. I'm showing yeah. showing my age there, aren't I? I think, but I think you get the analogy. What I'm what I'm getting at is that um, technology that seems to be um, winning out can, for whatever reason. Um, suddenly fall by the wayside. People might re remember Amstrad computers uh, okay. versus, of course, Microsoft. That's perhaps a little bit more up to date. But um, these things fall by the wayside when people don't expect it. And you get these kind yes. of um, euphoric stages where everybody buys into it. But in answer to your question, uh, yeah. you can tell when this pattern is no longer valid, when the um, support arc uh, is broken mm -hmm. to the downside. So if arc yes. number three breaks to the downside, that is the point where me as a technical analyst will turn to my um, subscribers and people on Twitter and say, right, the pattern's broken. Something right. else is ha happening here now. Okay. And th this, th th the whole thesis, the whole theory, the whole forecast is now um, thrown out um, and something else is developing. Uh, I like to, it's, a good, it's, it's good that you're here because I like to stress test some of the other forecasts I've heard from, uh, I would say, more fundamental analysts who are um, working in the crypto space. I've heard I've heard uh, several different bearish, uh, sorry, bullish rather bullish forecasts for Bitcoin. Let's talk about a million dollars a coin. I've heard that from several guests already. Uh, yeah, let's let's draw that out. And I just want to ask you very simply the probability of that happening based on just those just those arcs. And if you were to extrapolate price movement going forward, at what point could we possibly reach a million dollars a coin? <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, that's perfectly possible if the cycles continue and we continue to see a nice cyclical behavior, as happens in a lot of stocks over many, many um, decades. You know, there's there's no reason if... Uh, 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 yeah, I guess the underlying assumption is that the, is that the arcs yeah. continue to go upward. Yeah. So if you were to draw the, uh, the extend the line forward, uh, what uh, what year will we, will we be <laughs> for Bitcoin to reach a million dollars? So we're talking it's about a million dollars there, I suppose. Um, but arc number four would take the price down, and then it would bring it up to a million following the following the arc. So you'd be there, probably around about twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Okay, that's not too. But with arc with arc four not having formed yet, there isn't the evidence to say right. strongly just exactly okay. where this arc is going to be positioned. But I'm just doing it, kind of using a similar sort of. Um, 
symmetry to the previous ones, but it would and be I, somewhere in that. And I guess that's what period. that's what people mean when they say that Bitcoin will correct maybe 50, 60, maybe even 80 percent from its uh, local highs before reaching new highs. That's that's what that arc pattern shows, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So if we achieve, I don't know, somewhere above 100,000, I'm not going to mm -hmm. say we're going to hit the top line at um, probably over 300,000 that, you know, that historically, you would say yes. Looking at the chart, you'd expect the price to hit the top line somewhere around 250, 300,000, perhaps. But um, we will then, whether it's 100 or it goes beyond that, we'll see a pullback and we'll see the pullback down into arc number four, the depth of which, if you're using previous cycles, would perhaps be taking price back down to somewhere where we are now, perhaps somewhere. What you're 50. doing right now, you're you're compressing and extending the bottom of the arc. How are you? How are you yeah. deciding? How, uh, how deep that correction can go. So here you've got the correction in arc number two, and here you've got the correction in arc number three. Mm -hmm. So you can see from the, uh, it's roughly two, I suppose it's roughly two thirds of the way up through the, through the bull market move. Um, you'd have to you know, look at the numbers and, and work out exactly mathematically 3,000 there, it went to a high of 20,000. I mean, you, you, because this is a log scale here, of course, Yes. Although this this doesn't look like a very big move, it yes. actually um, actually brought us down from over twenty thousand to uh, somewhere around about three or four thousand. Right. So right. it's about seventy five percent drop. So if the same thing happens with arc number four, we got up to say, let, let's say for argument's sake, three hundred thousand. That would take us back down below a hundred thousand, um, perhaps somewhere mm -hmm. somewhere here, maybe something like that. Same sort of levels where we are now, maybe um, something like that. Okay. Yeah, we've we've, we've talked could, about this I last time where uh, yeah. yeah we've talked yeah. about this last time where Bitcoin has historically more or less followed a Fibonacci sequence. I, th I found that very interesting. Um, I've looked at that myself. Uh, let's talk about short term action now. Uh, the uh, the price movement we've seen over the last couple of weeks, Bitcoin has breached fifty thousand dollars, but it seems to be struggling to break that uh, that ceiling. And we're currently, as we're speaking today on Friday, we're at forty eight thousand dollars. So how do you see the short-term price movement playing out? Yeah, we've got a we've got a real battle going on here because we've got um, one of the uh, one of the arcs take, wanting to take price upwards, and we've got a smaller arc wanting to bring price downwards. So although I'm marginally bullish, I suppose you could say on on Bitcoin. You know, I'm cautiously bullish on on Bitcoin at the moment. And as we break above fifty one thousand, I'll be much more bullish and much more sort of um, breathing a bit of a sigh, sigh of relief. But yeah. in the meantime, there is a potential. You can see here this this inverted arc, which has been tested quite a few times now. So it yeah. says to me that there is a force um, exerting downward pressure on the price of Bitcoin at the moment, and it's going to take some some upward momentum to burst through that. And the point of me doing this is because even though I'm, as I say, sort of pretty bullish on Bitcoin, um, I want to always consider the downside possibilities. There's no point being blinded by um, hope and just kind of hoping that Bitcoin's going to go up. As a scientist, I, I always have to be testing my my ideas. And the only way I can test a, a bullish idea is to is to to apply a bearish scenario and wait to see the, the bearish scenario be invalidated. So mm -hmm. so I'm I'm putting in place a bearish possibility and I have to see that invalidated before my I'm happy to accept that my my bullish um, expectation is indeed going to unfold. So you know, the, the one reason to be a little bit bearish here is because we've broken down from a, a bearish rising wedge, this sort of triangle formation that had a, as a peak up here. We've yeah. broken down from that, and that was the first thing that made me a little bit concerned, and just just got me starting to think, which um, which resulted in me drawing this arc, which has been tested one, two, three, three times actually since I since I drew it. So, you know, it's, it's just something to bear in mind. And of course, if price does come down, yes. then the downside targets are shown by these two red areas, the, um, the smaller arc, probably somewhere around about uh, 42,000, <clears> and the, uh, the ultimate support given by the large arc, somewhere just above 40,000, perhaps, by the time we get down there. $40,000 before, we, before mm. we rally back up again. Okay, so that's, the, uh, yeah. that's a short-term floor for you. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, when we do talk about a rally, if you're if you're talking about a bull case scenario over the next, let's say, six months, uh, what would that target be for you? Yeah, so the target um, actually not six months. Let's say by the end of the year. So that's about four months from now. 
Yeah, well, to be clear, I think the, the, um, the crypto bull market probably will conclude before the end of the year. Um, all of the crypto charts I've been uh, drawing and looking at vary a little bit in timing between the third week of September and with some of them perhaps into mid-October or even late October. So there's a sort of a four-month, uh, sorry, a four-week window there between sort of late September and late October where I'd be looking for the crypto bull market to reach its peak. So uh, okay. part of that is driven. Part of that is driven by the uh, the Bitcoin dominance chart, which when it breaks down gives us about a two-week um, warning. I think if I've got this right, um, it gives us about a two-week window, two-week warning for the for the end of the crypto bull market. Okay, and the end of the crypto bull market at what uh, price level would that end? What's the upside target for you? Well, I'm I'm going to say with Bitcoin, perhaps my target is somewhere close to a hundred thousand. Anything okay. above that is um, is a is a huge bonus. Um, I'm going to say a hundred thousand is is um, would be if if we get to a hundred thousand from here, which would be roughly a double, then yes. I'd expect the altcoins um, and Ethereum and and the rest to triple, quadruple, uh, and some of them um, even more than that. And mm. I think that would fulfil the criteria for the bull market peak for me. So okay. I'm not going to go any more than a hundred thousand at this stage. Although I do acknowledge yes. the possibility. That it that it may go right. beyond that, and then it follows the descent of the arc downward. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Up. All right, excellent, yeah. great. Thank you for that. Let's talk about silver now. Let's apply some analysis to silver. Uh, <laughs> again, a market that's been rather range bound over the last couple of months, and uh, no different this week as well. So, how do you feel about silver? Yeah, well, here we go with a couple of arcs again. So, <clears throat> the skeptics um, for, for for this kind of uh, technical analysis just need to look at, you know, what happened when I drew the silver arc back in. Uh, um, sort of the early 2000s, and um, with the expectation that silver would 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 go up and complete the arc, and of course it get it got into the top right hand corner of the arc and completed its well destiny, if you want to call it that. Um, and then since then we've had a, a, a smaller. Some people refer these refer to these as handles um, building out, um, but it's it's in an arc formation as well. Um, so the the sort of medium term, if you want to call it medium term target, over the next um, couple of years, I suppose. Is back up to the all-time highs. Um, we have a we have the eight-year cycle low coming up as well, which you have to always bear in mind. Yeah. But when you zoom in and just have a little look at what's been going on there, we've been pretty range-bound for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. um, so this this level that a lot of people talk about, maybe around twenty-eight to thirty dollars, is is key. Um, we're currently bouncing around somewhere around twenty-four dollars. We had the, uh, the Fed um, discussing. Uh, things today and making announcements around uh, tapering and all that kind of stuff and uh, at least for the time being that's been very positive for precious metals and has pushed uh, both gold and silver up so we'll wait until the monthly close which uh, is in a, a few days time and see where you know how the monthly charts look okay so but according I, to your chart silver yeah. will top around 30 sorry it will top around 50 dollars by 2025 that's yeah, what that I, I, yeah, I expect things to play out a little quicker than that one way or the other. The, the edge of the arc here can be tested to the downside anywhere between 17 and about 21, 21 and a half dollars. So we're going to fairly soon, I think, make a decision one way or the other, yeah. regardless of today's positive price action. And I think it'll become fairly clear whether we're going to test this at the edge of this arc before moving up or whether we have a further spike up to probably around about $35 or so. You can see this resistance level in here, around 35. Um, but we've got we've got a, a, a cyclical low can, coming up in 2024, which um, I just can't um, ignore. And in fact, strangely enough, it's around about the, uh, the time period that this arc completes. It's sort of late 2024. Yeah. So my expectation would be for a, a breakup uh, above this arc and then drop back down quite Quite rapidly to test the edge of the arc again. Um, it, it's curious. Oh, it's taken, yeah. according to your analysis, it's going to take, oh boy, 20, 30, it's going to take 50 years to retrace 1981 highs. <laughs> I mean, basically. Well, <laughs> it, it, it is that, hard this, to um, that, that, envisage that, the fundamentals of that. And But the yeah. arc is only, I, I, all I can say is that it's um, telling us that we will you know, achieve this target by this time. It doesn't right. mean that we can't achieve it much sooner, but this this target price of a you know fifty dollars 
okay. we um, the technical analysis is telling us that it's going to be achieved sometime in this time period here, 2023 to, to 2024. But um, everything else considered, including gold and including everything else that's going on with the, the technical analysis and the charts, um, I expect a much more uh, rapid and volatile move before that and then a yeah. test back down to that level before we take off. And I should say that post-2024, uh, in, in that period 2024 to 2027, is when I expect the, um, the silver price chart to accelerate away to the upside um, just how far to the upside, I don't know, but uh, targets beyond $100 are um, extremely um, likely, in my view. All right. Excellent. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for your analysis today. I'd like to get your take on uh, other assets uh, like stocks as well, so we can talk about that next time. But uh, thank you for coming on the show today. Very welcome, David. Good to speak to you. And thank you for watching Kiko News. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter at DavidLynn underscore TV.